today we're going to rank the 2023 AFL captains. Now, I've done a million tier makers in the past and I'm never great at what I'm gonna base the criteria on. So today, I think I'm gonna base the criteria on who I would run through a brick wall for in the AFL. Now, like a lot of my tier makers, I'm gonna get a lot of these fundamentally wrong. These are my personal opinions. So I'd love to gauge your reaction in the comments down below. There's always some great debates after tier makers, but let's kick things off. Paddy Dangerfield, S grade player, A grade captain. He's not quite Joel Selwood levels but he's pretty good. And he's someone that I would, uh, I'd be pretty inspired to play behind is Paddy Dangerfield. Tom Jonas, D for mine, controversial. Tom Jonas is a very reliable player who would run through a brick wall for any of his previous captains, but him as a captain himself, he's in and out of the team. It shows the strength of where Port Adelaide's at at the moment. And I just think I've got him in the D grade category, but these positions are subject to change as the tier maker unfolds. Jared Witts, B for mine, pretty pretty big figure, pretty big size, pretty handy player. Maybe he's a C actually. I'll put Witts in a C. Took Miller, I'm gonna put in B, great captain, very, very young captain. Got a lot to learn, captain. Been injured a little bit this year. I've got Took Miller in the B category. Geez, it's, it's an interesting tier maker as well because a lot of these captains are quite new. So we lost a lot of experience in the captains in the last couple of years. So Trent Cochin was a captain for a long time. Joel Salwood was a captain for a long time. Travis Boak was a captain for a long time. Dane Zorko was a captain for a long time. Who, who was Adelaide? Was it, was it Tex and Sloan and stuff? So a lot of these captains are quite new. So it's very hard to judge where they're at at the moment. Dylan Grimes as a captain. Me running through a brick wall for Dylan Grimes. We have to put him in the C grade category. Terrific player though, very consistent. Toby Nankervis. Now he is a scary man. He told Brian Taylor to piss off in Roaming Brian once and I thought this guy has a bit of authority. He's got a bit of ticker. Toby, uh, by the way, hey, Toby, if there's, if it, it, no, Ned Nixon doesn't want to do it, okay, that's all right. So maybe through his intimidation alone, I might put the big Nank in B. Luke Shuey, I'm gonna put in C grade. I don't know, good player. Very good player and probably is a really, really good leader. But just from afar, being a, a fan, I'm going to put him in C. Darcy Moore, I think he's a terrific captain. I think Darcy Moore is so articulate in his interviews. I think when he spoke after Anzac Day, he spoke really well. I think he is a captain that you would run through a brick wall for. I think he's an awesome leader. So I'm going to put Darcy Moore in the S tier. Paddy Cripps, I'm going to put in A. I think he'd be one of the more experienced captains by now. And he's really come into his own in his leadership. And from the outside, looking at big Cripper, I would run through a brick wall for Cripper. I'd, I could arguably put Cripper in the S tier. And, and I probably will actually. I think Cripper, Cripper's pretty inspiring. One of Brownlow, I think through his habits alone, I would be inspired and I would run through a brick wall for Paddy Cripps. Jordan Dawson, at the start of the year, before the year started, I would have put him in D grade. Jordan Dawson, fringe Sydney Swans player, handy wingman, halfbacker, went to the Crows on a big deal and sort of scratched your head. And Jordan Dawson has just turned into one of the all-time great reliable players. Very damaging, seems like a great leader. I'm almost gonna put him in A. I think given it's his first year as skipper, I'm gonna put him in B, but Jordan Dawson is fast becoming one of the great captains of the comp, which you wouldn't have picked at the start of the year. I think Jack Steele's pretty, pretty reliable. He's a pretty reliable captain. Very good player, outstanding player. Always up there when it comes to the end of the year with the Brownlow chat and the best and fairest chat. I'm gonna put him in B though. Uh, he's still got a lot, to, a, lot, a lot to learn as a leader and I think in the next couple of years he will get there. Marcus Bontempelli. I reckon I'd be pretty inspired to, to be under the Bont now. He was a young captain a couple of years ago. And we, if we hadn't made this tier maker a couple of years ago, he'd be one of those players who's an A grade player, but sort of B or C grade captain. But I think the way he's matured in the last couple of years, he's pretty inspiring Marcus Bontempelli. 
When the dogs were zero and two and it looked like their gear was about to fade out, and I know it's so early in the season being zero and two, but you don't want to be chasing the comp from that early in the season. Um, he came out and pretty much said, I'll turn it around, boys. Like, we can do this. And I watched that press conference and I thought, yeah, you could get behind this bloke. He's really matured as a captain and he's one of my favourites to watch. So I'm going to put Marcus Bontempelli in the S tier category. Now, this is a man, well, I think this guy is in the army sergeant type category for captaincy and it's James Sicily and I reckon he's in A tier. I reckon he's a, a pretty good captain. I, I like the backman as captain. Sorry, Tom Jonas. I'm sort of contradicting myself here, but um, I like that sort of centre half back captain who barks orders. It's almost like the full back in the EPL or in the soccer who is the skipper and he can sort of see the whole ground and call people into place that's what i see for for james sisley so i, I really like the sis I put him in the a category alex pierce was a strange selection for mine no doubt internally alex pierce is loved and he was the right decision for for the captaincy but from the outside you saw andrew brayshaw and sarong and a couple of others that you thought probably could have stepped up just through that alone i think maybe andrew brayshaw is is the quintessential uh, Freeman or captain for mine. And through that alone is probably why I've got Alex Pierce down the bottom. He's a very good player. No doubt he'd be a great leader internally, but just from the outside, I've got him in the D category. Dane Rampy, I'm going to put in C because he makes some weird decisions <laughs> on the field. He climbs posts. He, he, he yells at umpires. He's a little bit undisciplined at times. Dane, he's very competitive. So just through his, his undisciplined acts that we've seen over the years from a leader, you can't have that. So I'm going to put Dane in C. Luke Parker, I'm going to put in B because he's someone who leads by example and you'd probably run through a brick wall playing alongside Luke Parker. And Cal Mills, you could put it, probably put in that category as well. So I'm going to put Cal Mills in B. And I almost think the Swans should lose points for having three captains. Why are we having three captains these days? The multiple captains, I think a little bit weird. The D's did it a few years ago with Jack Trengove and Jack Grimes, and then we did it with Jack Viney and Nathan Jones. Wasn't a big fan of it. I, I like the solo captain. So the, the Swans lose points for multiple captains. Just pick one. Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal. I might put Lockie... I'm going to put Lockie Neal in the A category. Brownlow medalist, gun player. If he said jump, I'd say how high. So... Just off the top of my head, I'd probably say Lockie Neal in A. And I'd probably put Harris Andrews in B. I think he's a, a pretty good captain. Was it? Is it just me or I thought Harris Andrews was their captain for like six years, but it was Dane Zorko not that long ago. Did Harris Andrews become captain, then lose it, then get it back? Or is that a Mandela effect that I've just made up? But it feels like Harris Andrews has been captain before, but it's good to see that he's captain again or for the first time. <laughs> All right, the two Ruiz boys. All right, I'm going to put... Lukey Mack in B. He's matured really well in the last few years as an AFL footballer and contributes on field, so I like Lukey Mack. And Jai Simkin, who's a superstar player, I think is probably in C in terms of leadership from what I see. Now, I don't see much of North Melbourne and, and their leaders, but um, just from the outside and just from casually viewing them, I would say Jai Simkin, you know, pretty new to the job. He's going to grow into it. Superstar player and no doubt will be a good captain in the future, but um, just in 2023, off the top of my head, I'm going to put him in the C category. Zach Merritt has sort of shocked me by how good of a leader he is. I'm going to put him in the B category. Um, Dyson Heppel, one of the better leaders you could play under for the last few years. So he's had a pretty good apprenticeship, Zach Merritt. But Zach Merritt's stepping up. There's been a few times he's been on the couch or AFL 360 and speaks really, really well. And he obviously puts together performances like that as well. So I'm going to put Zach Merritt in B. All right, Maxi Gorn, potentially S tier. Oh, maybe it's biased. He could sit in S tier. All Australian captain, six time All Australian Premiership captain. He's probably the best captain we've had since David Neat. No offense, Nathan Jones. But I'll put him in A. I'll put him in A just to show that I'm not biased. I think Maxi Gorn is a little bit lighthearted and, and goofy, which I think I would enjoy having a softer, a softer leader. But sometimes you do want someone who's you know, going to grab you by the scruff of the neck and tell you to get into a position. And, and no doubt Maxi probably pulls that lever sometimes, but I'm going to put him in the A category. Toby Green, controversial opinion. I'm going to put him in the S tier. 
Toby Green, he's been their leader for a long, long time. I know Cornelio was the captain and Phil Davis and Callum Ward and everyone else was the captain down there. But when you watch Toby Green, he barks orders. He's so competitive. His willingness to win is just so insatiable. So I'm going to be honest, I think I would run through a brick wall for Toby Green. That's probably why he's landed in the S category. Is there a little bit of a reshuffle we can do? Maybe Dan Ram- Dane Rampy down one. Maybe from this year, I'll put Jordan Dawson up one. <sighs> Maybe that's about it. All right, guys, that's it for another video. Let me know down below what you think are the better captains of 2023. Let me know if I've got any wrong. Let me know what you thought in general. And once again, I appreciate the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And I'll see you all for some more content very, very soon. Cheers, guys.